Well, I think we might start. Okay. Uh, where, are, where are we this week? We're on chapter 12, the subconscious mind. Okay, I'll start. Thanks. Okay, it's the 11th step towards riches. The subconscious mind consists of a field of consciousness in which every impulse of thought that reaches the objective mind through any of the five senses is classified and recorded and from which thoughts may be recalled or withdrawn as letters may be taken from a filing cabinet. It receives and files sense impressions or thoughts regardless of their nature. You may voluntarily plant in your subconscious mind any plan, thought or purpose which you desire to translate into its physical or monetary equivalent. The subconscious acts first on the dominating desires which have been mixed with emotional feelings such as faith. Consider this in connection with the instructions given in the chapter on desire for taking the six steps there outlined and the instructions given in the chapter on the building and execution of plans and you will understand the importance of the thought conveyed. The subconscious mind works day and night. Through a method of procedure unknown to man, the subconscious mind draws upon the forces of infinite intelligence for the power which, with which it voluntarily transmutes one's desires into their physical equivalent, making use always of the most practical media by which this end may be accomplished. You cannot entirely control your subconscious mind, but you can voluntarily hand over to it any plan, desire, or purpose which you wish transformed into concrete form. Read again instructions for the using the subconscious mind in the chapter on auto-suggestion. There is plenty of evidence to support the belief that the subconscious mind is the connecting link between the finite mind of man and the infinite intelligence. It is the intermediary through which one may draw upon the forces of infinite intelligence at will. It alone contains the secret process by which mental impulses are modified and changed into their spiritual equivalent. It alone is the medium through which prayer may be transmitted to the source capable of answering prayer. The possibilities of creative effort connected with the subconscious mind are stupendous and imponderable. They inspire one with awe. I never approach the discussion of the subconscious mind without a feeling of littleness and inferiority due, perhaps, to the fact that man's entire stock of knowledge on this subject is so pitifully limited. The very fact that the subconscious mind is the medium of communication between the thinking mind of man and the infinite intelligence is, of itself, a thought which almost paralyzes one's reason. After you have accepted, as a reality, the existence of the subconscious mind and understand its possibilities as a medium for transmuting your desires into their physical or monetary equivalent, you will comprehend the full significance of the instructions given in the chapter on desire. You will also understand why you have been repeatedly admonished to make your desires clear and to reduce them to writing. You will also understand the necessity of persistence in carrying out instructions. The 13 principles are the stimuli with which you acquire the ability to reach and to influence your subconscious mind. Do not become discouraged if you cannot do this upon the first attempt. Remember that the subconscious mind may be voluntarily directed only through habit under the directions given in the chapter on faith. You have not yet had time to master faith. Be patient, be persistent. Would someone else like to take over? A good many statements in the chapters on faith and auto suggestion will. I can keep reading. Excuse me. Um, Bill, can, 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 can you turn your mic up a little bit? We can barely hear you. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Can you hear me better now? No. A little bit. A little bit. 
Um, <laughs> let me see if I can figure it out. <laughs> oh, I can keep reading until you do if you want, Bill. What, 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 uh, go ahead. That, that's it. You're okay, on. Okay, there we go. Yeah. I'm good? Yep. Yeah. Okay. A good many statements in the chapters on faith and auto-suggestion will be repeated here for the benefit of your subconscious mind. Remember, your subconscious mind functions voluntarily, whether you make any effort to influence it or not. This naturally suggests to you that thoughts of fear and poverty and all negative thoughts serve as stimuli to your subconscious mind unless you master these three these impulses and give it more desirable food upon which it may feed. The subconscious mind will not remain idle. If you fail to plant desires in your subconscious mind, it will feed upon the thoughts which reach it as the result of your neglect. We have already explained that thought impulses, both negative and positive, are reaching the subconscious mind continuously from the four sources which were mentioned in the chapter on sex transmutation. For the present, it is sufficient if you remember that you are living daily in the midst of all manner of thought impulses which are reaching your subconscious mind without your knowledge. Some of these impulses are negative, some are positive. You are now engaged in trying to shut, uh, to help shut oil, uh, to help shut oil, the flow of negative impulses, and to aid in voluntarily influencing your subconscious mind through positive impulses of desire. When you achieve this, you will possess the key which unlocks the door to your subconscious mind. Moreover, you will control that door so completely that no undesirable thought may influence your subconscious mind. Everything which man creates begins in the form of a thought impulse. Man can create nothing which he does not first conceive in thought. Through the aid of the imagination, thought impulses may be assembled into plans. The imagination, when under control, may be used for the uh, creation of plans or purposes that lead to success in one's chosen occupation. All thought impulses intended for transmutation into their physical equivalent, voluntarily planted in, in the subconscious mind, must pass through the imagination and be mixed with faith. The mixing of faith with a plan or purpose intended for submission to the subconscious mind may be done only through the imagination. From these statements, you will readily observe that voluntary use of the subconscious mind calls for coordination and application of all the principles. Ella Wheeler Wilcox gave evidence of her understanding of the power of the subconscious mind when she wrote, you never can tell what a thought will do in bringing you hate or love. For thoughts are things and their airy wings are swifter than carrier doves. They follow the law of the universe. Each thing creates its kind and they speed are the track to bring you back whatever went out from your mind. Mrs. Wilcox understood the truth that thoughts which go out from one's mind also embed themselves deeply in one's subconscious mind where they serve as a magnet, pattern, or blueprint by which the subconscious mind is influenced while translating them into their physical equivalent. Thoughts are truly things for the reason that every material thing begins in the form of thought energy. Somebody else want to pick up? I'll go. The subconscious mind is more susceptible to influence by impulses of thought mixed with feeling or emotion that by those originating solely in the reasoning portion than those originating solely in the reasoning portion of the mind. In fact, there is much evidence to support the theory that only emotionalized thoughts have an action influence upon the subconscious mind. It's a well-known fact that emotion or feeling rules the majority of people. If it is true that the subconscious mind responds more quickly to and is influenced more readily by 
thought impulses which are well mixed with emotion, it is essential to become familiar with the more important of the emotions. There are seven major positive emotions and seven major negative emotions. The negatives voluntarily inject themselves into the thought impulses, which ensure passage into the subconscious mind. The positive must be injected through the principle of autosuggestion into the thought impulses which an individual wishes to pass onto his subconscious mind. These instructions have been given in the chapter on autosuggestion. These emotions or feeling impulses may be likened to yeast in a loaf of bread because they constitute the action element which transforms thought impulses from the passive to the active state. Thus, any one under thus may one understand why thought impulses which have been well mixed with emotion are acted upon more readily than thought impulses originate, originating in cold reason. You're preparing yourself to influence and control the inner audience of your subconscious mind. In order to hand over to the desire for hand over it to it the desire for money which you wish trans transmuted into its monetary equivalent. It is essential therefore that you understand the method of approach to this inner audience. You must speak its language or it will not heed your call. It understands best the language of emotion and feeling. Let us therefore describe here the seven major positive emotions and the seven major negative emotions that you may draw upon the positives and avoid the negatives when giving instructions to your subconscious mind. The seven major positive emotions, the emotion of desire, the emotion of faith, the emotion of love, the emotion of sex, the emotion of enthusiasm, the emotion of romance, the emotion of hope. These, uh, there are other positive emotions but these are the seven most powerful and the ones most commonly used to create effort, to creative effort. Master these seven emotions, they can be mastered only by use and the other positive emotions will be at your command when you need them. Remember in this connection that you are studying a book which is intended to help you to develop a money consciousness by filling your mind with positive emotions. One does not become money conscious by filling one's mind with negative emotions. The seven major negative emotions to be avoided. The emotion of fear, the emotion of jealousy, the emotion of hatred, the emotion of revenge, the emotion of greed, the emotion of superstition, the emotion of anger. Positive and negative emotions cannot occupy the mind at the same time. One or the other must dominate. It's your responsibility to make sure that positive emotions constitute the dominating influence of your mind. Here the law of habit will come to your aid. Form the habit of applying and using positive emotions. Eventually, they will dominate your mind so completely that the negatives cannot enter it. Only by following these instructions literally and continuously can you gain control over your subconscious mind. The presence of a single negative in your conscious mind is sufficient to destroy all chances of constructive aid from your subconscious mind. If you're an observing person, you must have noticed that the, the most that most people resort to prayer only after everything else has failed, or else they pray by a ritual of meaningless words. And because it is a fact that most people who pray do so only after everything else has failed, they go to prayer with their minds filled with fear and doubt, which are emotions the subconscious mind acts upon and passes on to infinite intelligence. Likewise, it is the emotion which infinite intelligence receives and acts upon. If you pray for a thing but have fear as you pray that you may not receive it or that your prayer will not be acted upon by infinite intelligence, your prayer will have been in vain. Prayer does sometimes result in the realisation that, that, that for which one prays. If you've ever had the experience of receiving that for which you have prayed, go back in your memory and recall your actual state of mind while you were praying and you will know for sure that the theory here described is more than a theory. The time will come when the schools and education institutions of this country will teach the science of prayer. Moreover, when prayer may be well reduced to a science. When the time comes, it will come as soon as mankind is ready for it and demands it, no one will approach the universal mind in a state of fear, for the very good reason that there will be no such emotion as fear. 
ignorance, superstition and false teachings will have disappeared and man will have attained his true status as a child of infinite intelligence. A few have already attained this blessing. If you believe this prophecy as far-fetched, like take a look at the human race in retrospect. Let us, uh, less than a hundred years ago, men believed that lightning was the evidence of the wrath of God and feared it. Now, thanks to the power of faith, men have harnessed the lightning and made it turn the wheels of industry. Much less than a hundred years ago, men believed the space between the planets to be nothing of great, but a great void a stretch of de dead nothingness. Now, thanks to the same power of faith, men know that far from being dead or a void, the space between the planets is very much alive, that it has the highest form of vibration known, excepting perhaps the vibration of thought. Moreover, men know that this living, pulsating, vibrating energy which permeates every atom of matter and fills every niche of space connects every human brain with every other human brain. Someone else want to have a go? Or I can finish the last bit. Yeah. No, this is Tim. Um, my book did not have the previous two paragraphs. I have two more paragraphs remaining. Is that correct? Uh, there's f about five or six. Well, so, I'll read and someone can just interject when uh, we come to a space. <laughs> so I, the next one I have is the method by which. Uh, what reason have men to believe I have? I can, um, I can go ahead and read. How about if I read okay. from the workbook then? Thanks, Cheryl. Okay. What reason have men to believe that this same energy does not connect every human brain with infinite intelligence? There are no toll gates between the finite mind of man and infinite intelligence. The communication costs nothing except patience, faith, persistence, understanding, and a sincere desire to communicate. Moreover, the approach can be made only by the individual himself. Paid prayers are worthless. Infinite intelligence does no business by proxy. You either go direct or you do not communicate. You may buy prayer books and repeat them until the day of your doom without avail. Thoughts which you wish to communicate to infinite intelligence must undergo transformation such as can be given only through your own subconscious mind. The method by which you may communicate with infinite intelligence is very similar to that through which the vibration of sound is communicated by radio. If you understand the working principle of radio, you of course know that sound cannot be communicated through the ether until it has been stepped up or changed into a rate of vibration which the human ear cannot detect. The radio sending station picks up the sound of the human voice and scrambles or modifies it by stepping up the vibration millions of times. Only in this way can the vibration of sound be communicated through the ether. After this transformation has taken place, the ether picks up the energy, which originally was in the form of vibrations of sound, carries that energy to radio receiving stations and these receiving sets step that energy back down to its original rate of vibration so it is recognized as sound. Subconscious mind is the intermediary which translates one's prayers into terms which infinite intelligence can recognize, presents the message, and brings back the answer in the form of a definite plan or idea for pro procuring the object of the prayer. Understand this principle and you will know why mere words read from a prayer book cannot and will never serve as an agency of communication between the mind of man and infinite intelligence. Before your prayer will reach infinite intelligence, a statement of the author's theory only, it probably is transformed from its original thought vibration into terms of spiritual vibration. Faith is the only known agency which will give your thoughts a spiritual nature. Faith and fear make poor bedfellows. Where one is found, the other cannot exist. You know, I've heard him talk about the um, 
theory or using the illustration of the wireless to talk about how thoughts uh, go from one place to another. But in this here, the, he's really made it clear that it's the faith. Faith is the, the catalyst that causes the, the thoughts that we think to go into the spiritual realm. And I hadn't really thought of it that way, you know, so how important is faith to have? Because if we don't have faith, then our thought vibration rate isn't being translated into spiritual format. Yeah, that's interesting, hey? Yeah. And, and we, all through, through the Bible, it tells you, with faith you will receive, with faith you will be heard. But until I read it, when I was reading this chapter earlier uh, and really put it down to, okay, if you don't have faith then it's not going to happen at all. It really hit home. Yeah. It's interesting. He's also, it also seems that he's saying that we cannot, we cannot build faith by memorizing prayers, as he said. So we cannot use our cognitive mind by reading someone else's prayers and send yeah. that off to the infinite energy in the universe uh the the previous paragraphs that you read nicole the one line is every brain is connected to all others i like that line i think he's also saying or implying by the fact that we cannot translate cognitive prayers into our subconscious directly we also need uh our desires in the chapter on desire there's the six steps to formulate a clear desire and how to imprint it on our subconscious the chapter right before the faith chapter yeah so i believe there's two two main points that he's making in this uh, chapter which is the way we can program our subconscious mind so it does what we want it to which is through auto suggestion and emotion and then the other step is translating that to infinite intelligence through faith yeah good point and it does seem to flow exactly that way, doesn't it? So, yeah, I really like this chapter. It just made it so much clearer, um, the way he explained it. And I'm, I'm just so surprised that, that it hasn't caught on more, the statement about you can't just, like, read somebody else's prayers from a book and expect... <laughs> Some results from that that just seems so logical yet it still is done to this very day isn't it it's done by quite a lot of religions like even the christian religion they're still yeah. saying the lord's prayer by route i'm sure that after you've done that every sunday for a period of time and i apologize if there's anyone here who <laughs> does that and i probably have in the past too but um you wouldn't have any feeling in it anymore you'd just be standing there saying it by route you know, and probably thinking about something else exactly exactly even for myself the way to get around that is is to uh change it up periodically <laughs> so if i have a few set prayers or devotions that i tend to work on every morning then after a while i'll say okay <laughs> there's no heart no feeling into it so i'm going to choose some others and just leave those aside and then a few months later or or a year later or something, another member of uh, the fellowship that I seek out spiritual growth in will say, yeah, I was reading this and it was really powerful. And it'll be like, dang, yes, I haven't read that this year. I think I'll go back to reading that. So hmm. okay to change it up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, just in terms of the <clears throat> practice to keep it from being rote memorization and recitation that if it was never mine to begin with and I'm not putting any feeling into it, then it's just... Uh, uh, I don't know, I guess it's like going to, to the YMCA and watching everybody else work out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The thing is, though, to communicate with yourself, your inner self, you need to use repetition. To enforce and to imprint something into your own subconscious mind, you need to use it, repetition. But that's not how we communicate with infinite. Well, one of the things that uh, in one of his recordings... Uh some years back, uh, I, I forget exactly who it was, but he had this program of uh, repeating every day in every way, I'm getting better and better. And uh, Hill was saying uh, about 50% of the people did get better and about 50% of the people did not. 
And when you looked at the people who did not get better, they were just repeating those words without any feeling. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's not necessarily uh, that, you know, reading someone else's uh, prayer uh, or thoughts uh, aren't, you know, is not a value. It's if you use it with feeling, with emotion, it will get into your subconscious and to infinite intelligence. But if you're just going to go there and uh, and say, every day in every way I'm getting better and better, nothing's going to happen. Yeah. Exactly. And there's two types. Like the one you're talking about there, Bill, is talking to yourself. So so training your own subconscious and programming your own subconscious. And the other type is a direct communication with infinite. And I, I don't know, well, at prayer. So for prayer, you're not training your subconscious. You're directly speaking to the higher source. So when you do that, it, to me, it's like talking to another person. Like if I talk to you, Bill, I won't sit here and say, um, I've had a really great day. I'm going to have a really great day today. I'm having a really great day today. I'm going to have a really great day today <laughs> because I'm talking to another person. And to me, that's what infinite intelligence is. It's a, it's a form of intelligence that you would communicate with, but in, in, programming a subconscious mind that's when i would use the repetition right uh, and also uh, like you say you know with uh, with prayer uh again it's got to be uh with positive emotions yeah and from the heart um with faith and according to this chapter faith what does he say it's the chemical Actually, I went back to the chapter on faith and he says, uh, faith gives power to thought. Faith is the chemical that gives us direct communication with infinite intelligence and faith transforms ordinary vibration of thought to its spiritual equivalent, which is what he's talking about here with the radio. So without faith, if we're trying to talk to infinite intelligence, he's, there's not, it's not going to be heard. Yeah, it's like he's saying, if you don't believe, if you don't believe in in if infinite intelligence or belief that that you're going to receive what you're asking for, that you might as well not even ask. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and the way to get faith is to repeat something to yourself because a belief is purely a thought that's been thought over and over and over. So if you have problems, like I was never taught about God as a child and I went to school and learned evolution. So when I finished school and I was an adult, that was my belief system, evolution. And it wasn't until I was approached by Jehovah's Witnesses that I actually decided to listen to see whether or not there was a God. So it took a long process for me to get my head around the fact that there was a higher source of intelligence that actually created us and for someone who doesn't believe that they would need to use a lot of repetition and a lot of reprogramming to get their head around having faith that they're talking to a higher intelligence no kidding and you know something that that also comes to mind when talking about this subject about just repeating things in rote you know and like just because that's what's always been said is the same thing about um um saying grace at, at a meal where people are doing the same thing they repeat some kind of thing that has a nice little rhyming thing to it and it means nothing so they, they think they're in gratitude, but they're really not because it's not coming from the heart. Yeah, and I actually only learned recently why people started doing that. And it's because you've probably seen all the experiments with water and how when people are, or even if they label water with happiness and, and gratitude that they can form beautiful crystals, but mm -hmm. without that, it's a chaos. So they blessing their food with with gratitude to create a vibrational frequency within the food itself to be able to when it digested into the body be a more positive influence on the body oh, really i didn't yeah. know that either well, so, that all makes of, sense. so all of these things have been known throughout the years but they've just been lost and turned into these dogmatic rituals right oh wow that is interesting nicole 
So, but if it, if it would have been done, if it's been done right, it could be very beneficial. Well, it makes me think maybe I should, you know, before I start eating my meal, feel a little grateful. <laughs> exactly. Wow. That that's a that's a very good reminder too. You know, besides our our bracelets and that kind of thing. But if you start making a habit of of saying grace and blessing your food. That's just another way of remembering to be grateful. Exactly. Cool. Yeah. Uh, what was he saying here about... Um, uh, what he's talking about in line 58 about making your desires clear and to reduce them into writing. And he's always talking about having a clear picture and... And then rep doing your repetitions and and uh, but I, I can't remember where it is and I've, it's in this chapter somewhere. But he's talk but he's talking about how you really have to become that. You've got to be the essence of what you want because then because that's your subconscious mind and that's what's talking to the infinite really. Um, so you've got to make your subconscious mind be the person who will you know have your successful business or drive in that car or own that type of house or have those types of friends you've got to do it now in the moment because in the moment's the only time that everything occurs so it's more than just it's you got to get down to the reason behind why we're doing all these things all the repetition and having the faith and having the desire and getting clear it's so we can be it now we can be that now and then we will attract all of those things and I just can't remember where, you, where it was. Yeah, I'm just trying to scroll through and see if I can spot it as well. Oh, he's talking about, in line 108, he's talking about um, voluntarily planting things into the subconscious mind that, that must pass through the imagination and be mixed with face. And, and I thought, what does he mean by passing through the imagination? Because he really doesn't elaborate on it he says you know the mixing of faith with a plan or purpose intended for the submission to the subconscious mind may only be done through the imagination so i'm thinking visualization and acting as if that's what I, they're the two things that i thought that he would mean by passing it through the imagination Voluntarily planted in the subconscious mind must pass through the imagination and be mixed with faith. Yeah, that is kind of, it, it's not really clear, is it, that must pass through the imagination. Does anybody else have a, a kind of an idea of what that means? I don't think it's that important to get... No. No very rigid in the, uh, the word choices that Napoleon Hill used at that point in time. I, I think it's better to approach it from a framework of what really works. So if, if I try to address what he's addressing, it, it, it gets all convoluted because um, now my mind has been framed by, you know, reading about positive psychology or cognitive functions or neuroscience and how we lay down pathways and you know our our, our neural synapses and our our uh, brain connections it it might be a little bit convoluted but if we think about it more in broader terms about what is it that we do that works so if he's talking about through the imagination that there has to be some of our own individual creativity we have to own it it has to be ours not mm. someone else's. Okay. Well, that makes perfect sense, given mm. what he talks about in the rest of the chapter. Absolutely. No, my brain is just swimming. I, I'm reading too many <laughs> similar and slightly dissimilar books at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Including yeah. Wayne Dyer and Michael Bernard Beckwith and uh, studying uh, NLP certification and then his hobby. Studying positive psychology. I'm all kinds of a hot mess. <laughs> it does all. It does all eventually come together, though. <laughs> Bits and pieces, and and how I translate it to uh, 
uh, might not to be the way that uh, you would translate it, Nicole. Uh, and some of it just comes down to being able to describe it in a way that I can communicate it effectively to someone else so that they can understand it, which is what Napoleon Hill tried to do. Yeah. Well, Bill, we, we're having a hard time hearing you again. Uh, I didn't say oh, anything. There we go. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was on self mute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and here's another line that that kind of um, confirms what we were talking about it, on line one thirty eight. Only emotionalized thoughts have any action influence upon the subconscious mind. So. That kind of lends to what we were talking about, that it has to be your own and not something that you're just adopting from someone else. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So programming our subconscious mind is pretty much the most important thing we can do. Mm -hmm. So and that's hard to stick to though, isn't it? Yes. Training yourself to get, that happening 24 7 takes a lot of will yeah. <laughs> I find myself getting like really sidetracked a lot with you know the the everyday demands and yeah. and um, it's, it's really difficult to pull yourself back from that yeah what I've been using more recently um, is the fear the essence of that person and trying to be that so for me, you know, wanting to have a successful coaching practice and just the fact that I work with children already and, you know, the type of house I want to live in and all the things that I want, I just sit down and I think to myself, you know, what is that person? Who is that person who has those things? Who do I want to really be? And and also characteristics of myself and, and how I would prefer to be, you know, like more confident, more outspoken, you know, i you know i'm presenting something i know what it is do it with some gusto and do it with some you know conviction mm -hmm. so those types of things that that are where i'm lacking and i think to myself you know who who is that person who is that and then i try to be that try to have that energy and that essence so that then i'm doing it all day so in every moment i'm being that person which is kind of a more of an all day thing rather than and i'm still doing you know what we're meant to be doing, auto suggestion and those types of things, but I, but mm -hmm. I'm trying to take a more of a all day in every moment kind of approach, and it, for me, it's working better than it was before That's because I'm becoming that person, and I'm always conscious of being the person who has that or does that or is that. That's a great idea, Nicole. I really like that. I think yeah, that would be very helpful to to keep yourself in the right frame of mind rather than like, you know, coming in and out. Yeah. Because I mean, you attract what you are. So if I'm not that person yet, like if I'm looking forward to a day when I'm going to be that person, it's never going to happen. I've got to be the person first. And then the things will start to come. You've got to be the person. You are the only thing that you have control over. So you become that person first and then the other things externally will start to come into place you'll all get i get hunches to go and do something i'm i feel like i want to go and vacuum the carpet or you know instead of waiting till someone's coming over <laughs> <laughs> things like that <laughs> have an orderly office and and you know speak up when there's conversation going on that i know something about instead of being all humble and quiet and you know, just being that person now as much as I possibly can, and I'm getting better at it as I go, rather than going, oh, one day I'll be doing this and I'll just keep studying and keep working towards it and writing plans and doing my auto-suggestion and, and eventually I'll be that. I'll have to be it now. Perfect. Perfect. And none of this is, is an overnight matter. That's why a lot of the, the work that we have to do is called a practice, whether it's a gratitude practice, we practice it until it just becomes more in our 
subconscious, our very nature to express genuine appreciation for everything. Uh, Wayne Dyer describes it as every time I, I see a coin laying on the street, I just have this immense amount of appreciation as I pick it up and, and, and positive things happen by expressing this practice of appreciation until you, you get to a, another level, a more uh, spiritually enlightened stage, I think you could say, so that you're, you're living it, you're being it, but you don't begin uh, by trying to force yourself to say, well, no, I, I should be grateful all the time. It just, we just don't work that way. So we have to do a lot of practice or mindfulness is a practice. Uh, loving kindness is a practice. Uh, forgiveness meditations, it's a practice. And, and we do all that and it gears us more towards openness, uh, a warm, embracing heart receptivity abundance as they would say in the law of attraction or the law of creation and we become that by practicing on a regular basis so almost at the beginning what we have to do is exactly the opposite of the past five paragraphs of what napoleon hill wrote right here that's where we start with when we're beginning this journey which paragraphs do you mean well, towards towards the end, a, a lot of what he says is, it, it'd be easy to construe it as as forcing myself that I, I I should be more grateful, but I have to go through the mechanical actions of practicing more gratitude. I should be more appreciative and embracing towards abundance, but I have to practice the mindfulness meditation. That's one of the tools that I use, for instance. To, so that I can I can be more aware of where my mind is, so that I can guide my thoughts rather than just running on autopilot in my default mode and letting my subconscious patterns, many of which which were programmed into my youth incorrectly, not negative intentions, but it's just how we tend to process some negative inputs when we're very young, and they have far-reaching ramifications. And we have to just begin by changing our practice, not by grasping and holding on to, well, I should be this, meaning I should be further down the path, or I should have evolved more, uh, to have a, a spirit of practice and say I'm in the process of becoming until I'm spending more time in the I am than the I will. Does any of that make sense? Yeah, I see where you're coming from. It does take a long time to reprogram your subconscious mind. On the other hand, with your written goals, personal goals, it is good practice to try and be that person now, not with all the gratitudes and all the other things that you're supposed to be doing that you're just talking about, but whatever your goal is, what, like say your professional goal, whatever that goal is, take on the characteristics of that person now so what who is that person what do they how do they think what do they do how do they feel what are their emotions and um, intentions and those types of things and and take on those characteristics now because when you become that person that's when the other elements will be attracted to you or when you will uh, receive inspiration from infinite intelligence to go and do something, call someone or take some kind of action to, to bring those things to you. Do you get what, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm pretty sure I just read that somewhere as well. And it might've been in um, one of Napoleon Hill's other books about um, being the person that you have to you have to act like the person that you want to be. Yeah, because it's not until you are that person that you will have the things that you want to have. And it's kind of along the same lines as living in the house that you want, and and like you you got to have it before you actually will attract it. Exactly, so, and that's yeah. such an important point. Like we, it's nearly in every chapter, and we gloss over it. 
Um, but in this chapter about, you know, programming our subconscious mind, that is part of the picture of being that person now before any of the other stuff's going to come. Because the subconscious yes, mind yes. is the communication vessel between us and infinite. So it's still communicating old stuff to the infinite. And so until we become that new person and it takes a period of time for that programming to happen but the characteristics of the person and the energy or the essence of that person we can take it on now so just with the posture of the person and and the actions of the person and the attitude of the person we can take on now it may not be very different to what you're already doing Professionally, it's probably quite different. Yeah, that's interesting. Mm. I don't think I'm anywhere close to that because I'm not quite sure who, who that person is that I want to be yet, but, but that's okay. Yeah, and that's where he's talking about when, when you know what you want, get a clear picture and then you can take that on. Yeah. Well, cool. I like it where he says, "There's no toll gates between the finite mind of man and infinite intelligence." Mm -hmm. Doesn't cost anything except patience, faith, persistence, understanding, and a sincere desire. This is kind of interesting where he says the presence of a single negative in your conscious mind is sufficient to destroy all chances of constructive aid from your subconscious mind. Yeah. That's a little scary, actually. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is a big area that we need practice because sometimes you will find yourself thinking about something and you didn't even realize your mind was wandering over there. Until you exactly. kind of come back to yourself and go, oh, oops, hang on a minute. Change the focus there. Exactly. That so it's, again, it's like, like was said, it's mindfulness. Make sure that you're paying attention to where your mind is going. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a process, and I guess that's why it says patience is part of um, <clears throat> being able to communicate with infinite. Because we're so far removed, really, aren't we? In our yeah. present, present, the way we are. Yeah, and I like how he said, be patient. I can't remember what line it was. Don't... Don't feel bad if you can't make this work on your first try, kind of. Yeah. Just be patient. Yeah. Because even the understanding of it all is hard to get your head around. For sure. And, you know, what's more important? What do I do first? You know, how do I start implementing this? And definitely faith. In this chapter, I definitely feel like faith is faith in the infinite is one of the more important elements to, you know, getting our message out there to get back what we want. And then the programming of sub. Go ahead, Nicole, finish. I'll just say, and then, and then second, the, the programming of your subconscious to make sure the message that's going out is the right message that you want going out. You know, speaking on another call about uh, Waddles and uh, Napoleon Hill and this concept of infinite intelligence or what Waddles would call the formless substance. And do any of you have an experience or care to speak about uh, a, a belief relative to, say, a faith in God? 
relative to universal intelligence and infinite intelligence? What do you mean, like just our personal belief? Um, I guess you could, it's, well, some of it's going to be instilled in us or we'll choose to, to study it and believe it and come to some internal representation of, of what it means. So in, in the religion of my parents, this would be somewhat heretical, talking about universal intelligence or infinite intelligence in the sense that I represent it inside myself. That God is part of it, but it's not all of it. That there's, there's a creative force in the universe, and I've had to just kind of come to some operational definition myself of, of coming to terms with some uh, faith, some of which is going to be based in elements of religion and some elements of uh, Far Eastern spirituality and some elements of New Thought, New Age thinkers of which Waddles and Napoleon Hill are a few of many. I think it's a concept that's completely foreign to us as physical lumps of stuff because I think that it it's kind of like the way our conscious mind works as a flow of energy, not something tangible that you can say this is it it's more of the energy of love and the energy of faith and the energy of gratitude and you can move into different vibrational frequencies of all of those different things so it's like a movement of of different energies that you can be in the space of any one of those energies that you choose but it's all one And it's also an intelligence, so the thoughts are part of that. There's thoughts. It's, I think it's in, even in this chapter, he talks about thoughts as being, uh, you're in the essence of thoughts. Where is it? It's, I'm sure I read it in this chapter that we're kind of like in a sea of thoughts and depending on our vibrational frequency are the ones that we come into contact with that come into our mind. So I kind of, see infinite intelligence or God or our creator or our source as energy, just energy that we come in and out of contact of different elements of it depending on our personal frequency at the time. Well, I think I'm still caught a little bit in the in the old religion style where you know this is God is an all-powerful be being that's separate from us. So, you know, I'm still trying to grasp that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm connected, I guess, which is what the, the new, new age thought, like Napoleon and, and Waddles are trying to teach us. And I, th I think I'm still having a bit of an issue with um, coming to terms with that. Well, if you think in terms of not God being a physical being, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. but in terms of God being omnipresent, okay, yeah, he's in everything. So and, therefore, and he has to be, or it, 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 I guess I can't say he, because then again, that's that showing that I'm thinking he's a, a well, he's, no, but that he's a, a uh, something separate. Well, but yeah, but, uh, I recognize that, it, that he's everywhere. It's, it has to be for everything to be operating the way it is in the world so perfectly. And, you know, if you think of it that way, you know, uh, you are uh, part of God. Okay? In that... Your, uh, you know, your soul, your being is communicating with everything else in uh, in the universe. 
And as long as your message is going out in the proper way, if you will, the rest of the universe will hear it. Yeah, that's pretty amazing, isn't it? Well, I mean, it's like uh, today, I, I was thinking about uh, uh, a friend of mine uh, who lives down in, uh, in the Phoenix area, uh, you know, saying, you know, now that uh, I'm going to be down there, we're going to have to get together uh, more uh, more often, obviously. Uh, and out of the blue, he called me. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, you hear about the, that happening all the time, don't you? Exactly. And, you know, uh, so my thoughts were about him. They, uh, My thoughts were positive. And... Yeah, you know, he must have picked up on the fact that uh, I was thinking of him, and then he started thinking of me, and he called me. Yeah. Yeah, and you know what? Come to think of it, that's happened to me a lot, too, but I just kind of always discounted it, too, you know, that it was just a, an accident. There are no accidents. <laughs> that's true, though. Okay, good. Thanks for reminding me of that. <laughs> it's kind of making me think <clears throat> the subconscious mind is how we communicate with infinite and that those are linked. Maybe it's the conscious mind that's the separate part. It is. The ego. So I really who we are is our subconscious mind isn't it and our and our conscious mind is the separate thing that allows us to function as a physical being i really like that how you drew that nicole that really makes a lot of sense the conscious mind is how we can operate as a physical being and that makes perfect sense if you if you draw the conscious mind to the ego yep or right yep because the ego is what what helps us to to you know stay away from danger um you know fear change all those kind of things and that's what keeps us in in our physical reality that makes perfect sense so if you just start thinking about yourself as as your subconscious you know, look at yourself in a whole different way. Mm. Because really, that's your truer self, isn't it? Because it's yeah. a, the only thing that's in there are things that have been repeated and things that you've given emotion to, things that you've been exposed to for a long time. That's the true you. And that's what you go back to because you tune out and you just, you're just you just pretty much a robot to your subconscious mind acting on autopilot most of the time. So that's really mm. the true you. The mm -hmm. conscious mind is, you know, you make different decisions and do different things. Right. And what's, what's kind of, I don't know if it's scary, but um, in some ways that, that your subconscious mind doesn't filter anything out. It accepts mm. everything. So it's on the same wavelength as infinite because that infinite works the same way. And only in the moment. Right. Right. So our subconscious mind, you can see better after you said that that how it is linked how it is part of the infinite intelligence i guess is the best way to put it there because it works in the same way functions in the same way yeah interesting And talking about being being inspired to do things or yeah having inspiration to take some kind of action <clears throat> if you feel like you want to do something that is detrimental like stay in bed instead of go to the gym or have that third glass of wine or you know leave the dishes sitting there instead of washing them up or go on and what's wrong with those things <laughs> <laughs> it, nothing unless that's not what you want to be doing.
<laughs> that that would be fine if that's what you want to be doing. But then I was thinking to myself when I was reading this chapter, when you're inspired to do something that you don't, that's not conducive to what your outcomes are, you could ask yourself, why am I being inspired to do that? What have I been feeding my sub? Because we're learning about how to feed our sub to be inspired to do the things we want. Well, we could work it backwards and analyze what we've been doing. You know, why, why, why do I want to just go and sit down and have six glasses of wine? <laughs> why don't yeah. I want to go and mow the lawn or, or go take the kids to the park? Or, you know, why am I being inspired to do that? What's happening? What am I, what, how am I programming, programming my subconscious mind? Mm. So you could work backwards. Yeah. That's interesting. I think I'm going to try that. But I've definitely noticed that the things I focus on are the things that I'm getting thought inspirations on. You know, like when I start a new project or start studying a new uh, subject matter, things that are coming up into my mind are definitely things that I've been focusing on and I'm sure that that's natural. Everyone notices that. So yeah, I can see how that side of things work. You know, the focus is where you're going to get the inspired thought. In the moment, it's just the, the, the deep programming that takes that bit more time. The belief systems. Mm -hmm, that makes sense. Because it takes a lot of time to change a belief. If you have a belief that you're not good enough to be the next Tony Robbins, then that's a belief system that's going to hold you back. You need to change the belief system before you can, before your subconscious is going to believe that and have faith in that to allow that to happen. Not that I want to be the next Tony Robbins. <laughs> <laughs> you're a little short, I think. Yeah, and my hands are way smaller. <laughs> <laughs> And you know, this statement that he makes about people um, going to prayer only after everything else has failed and their minds are filled with fear and doubt and then they don't understand why their prayers are not being answered, that, that really is an, an enlightening statement, you know, because I know I've prayed many times and, you know, but never to receive what what I've asked for and it's because of fear and doubt. Yeah. You've got a bit of background noise, Bill. I'm not sure what it is. Might be your mic. Is that me? Oh yeah. Pretty sure it's you. That's better. Oh, now he's muted. <laughs> yeah, it was you. I'm not sure what that was. It may have just been your mic playing up. Yeah, I, I looked at that too, and I th and that still brought me back to that point where he said that, it, well, back in the in the chapter on faith, that faith is the chemical that what did he say? Uh, faith is the chemical that gives us direct communication with infinite. So if we don't have that chemical in there, we don't have that direct communication. Mm -hmm. And still, the illustration of the radio um, really so much clearer you know faith transforms ordinary vibration of thought into its spiritual equivalent so like the radio station steps up the frequency sends it over steps it back down so we can hear it again same same kind of theory yeah that really that really brings it home doesn't it mm. <clears throat> actually i didn't know how that worked so that was that was pretty interesting to me. Yeah. So I guess you could work on your faith in a few different ways. You could read material on people who have, you know, had results from communicating with infinite intelligence and you know, all of this type of information that we read, talking to other people who have sent you know prayers out and gotten answers back 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know that when I was a Jehovah's Witness, and I really believe that it doesn't matter which religion you're in, as long as you have faith. I, I don't think that infinite intelligence cares how we believe because when I was with the Jehovah's Witness um, group, I would hear stories all the time, like all the time. Their faith was extreme and, you know, they they because some of them pioneer, which means they, they go door to door predominantly mm-hmm. and then work part time and <clears throat> quite often they'd be short on money and they'd be on their last, you know, packet of noodles or whatever and someone would leave a box of food at their door just at the right time or, you know, I was constantly hearing stories like that or people's house would burn down and the whole neighbourhood would come and help build their house and you know they were always having stories of you know something happening just when they needed it to because of their faith Mm -hmm. and so I I don't think that the infinite really cares how we picture because being the sole source of intelligence understands obviously how our physical mind can work so I don't really think, you know, with my experience on how people have received inspiration and received answers to prayers and have all different faiths, I don't think the way your faith is or how your faith is is the most important thing. I just think that having faith, that it will happen when you pray, is the most important thing. For sure. For sure. And actually, there's a lot of scriptures in the Bible now that when I go through this material, things come back to mind, like he was talking about um, how the positive thoughts, where was it? Um, I think it's line 78. The subconscious mind will not remain idle. If you fail to plant desires in your subconscious mind, it will feed upon the thoughts which reach it as a result of your neglect. And the Bible talks about if you don't tend your garden, weeds are going to grow. And the weeds grow really easily and, and just by, you know, automatically. Whereas the, the vegetables have to be planted in there and watered and cared for and looked after. So it has that illustration in the Bible about our mind. And so, you know, however way you translate the Bible into however many different religions there are, it still, it still has words of truth in there. Yeah, you know, that's amazing. I didn't understand a lot of that stuff in the Bible. It just made no sense to me. And But from now from undertaking this studying, I'm going, okay, now this is making sense. Yeah, and I've always wondered, why is the Bible in riddles and metaphors yes, and exactly. you know, illustrations? It's because that's how the subconscious mind works. So that's how they've received the inspiration through their subconscious mind. Right. So that's how they've written it down. Right. Yep. It's not a horticultural guide. It is a <laughs> guide for spiritual technology. Yep. And and there's I think Jim Rohn says it's it's the, the battle of, of good versus evil relative to the garden and reap what you sow that uh, weeds will overtake the garden and he made it crystal clear that we're talking about what you feed your mind, that if you're not consciously choosing to feed your mind positive inspiration, positive endeavors, positive goals, positive experience by reading biographies and the people that you associate with, the weeds will overtake your mind. Yep. And and he talks about that there actually as well in line 90 says you're now engaged in trying to help shut all the flow of negative impulses and to aid in voluntarily influencing your subconscious mind through positive impulses of desire. And then he goes on to say, when you achieve this, you will possess the key which unlocks the door to your subconscious mind. And then even in the next line is really comforting because eventually you'll control the door so completely that no one desirable thought may influence your subconscious mind. That's, that's going to be a nice day. (laughs) 
Yeah, yeah. I think <laughs> eventually. <laughs> eventually. Yes. <laughs> but it, it tells you that it is possible, right? Yeah. Yeah, this is, again, a very important chapter. And each one seems just to build on the previous ones and clarify even more. Yeah, because remember in the chapter on persistence, he took us back to the six steps, and this chapter is taking us back to the six, six steps again. Exactly. So having the fixed goal, what you're going to give in return, the date, a plan to put it into action and then a written statement to repeat morning and night. And then, and then there's also the self-confidence formula in the chapter on faith, which I think feeds directly into the question about imagination as it filters through our imagination. I think that's oh. instrumental, that self-confidence formula yeah. in the chapter on faith. Yeah. He takes us back to the chapter on desire, and I only wrote a quick note, but I think it uh, might have been where I got my previous thought from, where he says, you need to see yourself doing it, feel yourself doing it, having it, and being it. So that was a good point too. So having that vibrating at the frequency of that person who has that, idea that you have written down your six steps becoming that person now so then those things will start to come well thank you very much for getting up so early on a sunday morning to carry this message nicole and it's always a i've pleasure. enjoyed spending my Saturday afternoon with uh, all of you reviewing this material again. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you, Nicole. Thanks, yeah, everyone, for coming. And input is always appreciated and it always gives me something to think about and help me go forward for the next week. Thank you very much. Thanks. What are we doing next week? The brain. The brain. Awesome. Ooh. <laughs> Some of those neural pathways, Tim. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's more, more potential electrical connections in that brain than there are molecules in the known universe. Wow. That's amazing. Potential electrical connections. Oh, okay. <laughs> Some of us have a few less than others. Is that what you're trying to say? No. <laughs> no, Albert Einstein's brain weighed about the same as yours and mine. Yeah. Although the density of the connection, the actual connection, which would be the density in his gray matter, was much, much higher than in most people, which meant that he spent a lot of time thinking and acting in a certain way so that he created additional connections. Uh, the way connections happen in the brain, imagine walking down the sidewalk like a, a cobblestone path and you come to a section where there's no cobblestones and you have to jump over that to reach the cobblestones. But every time you do that, you drop down another brick. So when you do the same thought or the same habit repeatedly each time you set down another brick, sooner or later that connection has zero space for the chemicals to travel so it becomes a much faster that's that's when the the neurons become wired together so there's zero distance zero space there for the chemicals that they have to travel from one connection to another connection with habitual rep repetition and that's what we try to do when we're building new habits is we're trying to pull little cobblestones out of the bad habits and put them into the good habits so that they fire and wire together faster. And a lot of it has to do with whole brain learning, having a significant amount of emotional participation, a physiological response in our body. If I was thinking about this, how I learned 
uh, it was, we were talking about money consciousness and, and I've been thinking about that and reflecting back on my youth. Now, think about a situation in our childhood where our parents might have had a heated argument about money. If that happens and you witness that between the age of, say, two and eight, almost invariably, it's going to give you a negative habitual thought pattern of money and wealthy people and what's nice. And it's because it's real simple to make that spurious connection that, oh, people who argue, they're talking about money. So any thoughts about money or any people with money tend to argue and it tends to make me feel agitated. So I don't want anything to do with money. Yeah, and because that was witnessed in with a state of high emotion, that will be an immediate pathway built straight away, whereas most of the time it's through repetition. Yep. There's a little video, I'll, I'll post it in our group. Um, it's only one or two minutes on neural, on neural pathways. It's a really quick little cartoony thing that shows you how when we do a new habit over and over, that neural pathway gets built and the old one through lack of use slowly closes up, a little bit like a jungle path. Keep going through it, through it, through it. It becomes a good walking path, whereas the other one, when you stop using it, it'll grow back over. So That's the trick. Let the weeds overtake the bad habits. <laughs> yeah. So use that whole, that whole illustration to our advantage. Let the weeds grow where we want them to grow. And keep the path that we want cultivated. <clears throat> cultivated. <laughs> Great visual. All right. Well, All right. thank you, everyone. Okay, well, looking forward to talking to you next week. You can have a good one. Thanks. You too. Bye-bye. 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 Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.